This is the fourth section of the algebraic the first chapter in the pure year one book. And as the title suggests, it's just about working out um, different ways of, of proving statements. Now, there's no sort of one method that I can show you because the questions are all going to be different. Sometimes you're given some working you need to show where the errors are. Um, but make sure that your working is clear and that you only use the information that's given. Don't make other assumptions and make up new maths on the spot. Only use what's been given to you. Okay, it says prove that these three brackets expanded is equivalent to the expression on the other side. Well, the way we're going to do this is just by expanding the brackets. So we'll start with the first two. So we've got 3x plus 2 and times by x minus 5. So let's multiply those out first. So that's going to give you 3x squared minus 15x plus 2x minus 10. So that's 3x squared minus 13x minus 10. I'm now going to multiply this out by the third bracket. So 3x squared minus 13x minus 10. I'm going to use a quid to do this. x plus 7. I'm just lay it out in a grid like this. So I will have uh, 3x cubed minus 13x squared minus 10x and then 21x squared and 13 times 7. Let me use a calculator for that. I think it's 96. Am I right? No, it's 91. So minus 91x and minus 70. So let's put the terms together. I'm just highlighting the terms. So I'm going to have 3x cubed um, and then 21 minus 13 is going to be plus 8x squared. And then 91 minus 10 minus 101x minus 70. So we can say um, that that is equivalent to the thing that we started with. We've just proved it by multiplying out the brackets. So as required. Okay, prove that if x minus p is a factor of f of x, then f of p equals zero. Now, what does this mean? Let's start with an example. Um, so I know that if, um, so this is not going to be part of working, we're just going to show you why we're doing what we're doing. So if I've got f of x is this function, for example, yeah, I know um, that x minus 3 is a factor of this. Okay, so x minus 3 is a factor. Because I know I've done a long division and we, we don't get a, a remainder. Now what does that mean? That means that actually um, I can write 2x cubed plus x squared minus 18x plus 9. That is equivalent to this factor times by some other polynomial here. Yeah, that's basically what a factor means, that you can times x minus 3 times by something else to give you the expression you started with. So we're going to use that to help us do this. So what does that mean? That means that this polynomial that I've got can be written as uh, x minus p, this factor, times by some other polynomial. This is the type of thing you'd get if you were doing like long division. You would, and there was no remainder, you'd get this other polynomial at the top. That's basically like what the, the g of x is. Now we want to work out what f of p is. Okay, so f of p would be replacing f with p. 
So f of p equals, well, whatever we've got, we've got x, we put p there, p minus p times by g of p. Okay, well, that bit in the bracket is zero, isn't it? So we don't care what the other bit is, we're going to get zero. p minus p is zero. Okay, so there we've proved it. And actually what we've used to prove it is the factor theorem. So we've not made up any new mass, we've basically used a factor theorem to prove that statement. Prove uh, that A, B, C are the vertices of the right angle triangle. Now for them to be the vertices of a right angle triangle, it means that um, two of the sides need to be um, perpendicular. Okay, so if ABC is a right angle triangle, then two of the sides, two of the sides must be perpendicular. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out the gradients of each of the sides and see if any of them are perpendicular. Okay, so let's start with the gradient of the side AB. Right, so that's going to be the change in Y. So let's do 3 minus 1 over the change in X, 3 minus 1. So that's 2 over 2. So AB has a gradient of 1. Okay, let's do the gradient of um, BC. So let's just draw my triangle ABC. I've worked out the gradient of this side. AB is 1. Right, gradient of BC. So we'll do the change in Y over the change in X. So we'll do 2 minus 3 over 4 minus 3 so we will get uh, negative 1 over 1 so we've got a gradient of negative 1 so BC has a gradient of negative 1 in fact we don't need to do any more because A, B and BC are perpendicular but I'll carry on anyway and I'll do the gradient of AC the other side so let's do 2 minus 1 over 4 minus 1. So that gives me a gradient of um, 1 over 3, get a third. So it's got a gradient of a third. So the, the right angle must be up here. Okay. I'll just write down uh, triangle ABC is a right angle triangle since sides A, B and B, C are perpendicular. And I've got the working there to prove that the gradients of the two sides are perpendicular to one another. And remember that um, if we take these two gradients, the product of the gradients should be minus one, and they are. And if the product of the gradients is minus one, that proves that the sides are perpendicular. So we're going to prove that this equation here has no real roots. So the thing to remember, no real roots, no real roots means that the discriminant is less than zero. Right. Let's work out the discriminant of this quadratic. A is k, three, b is 3k, c is 2. So b squared minus 4 times a times by c can be less than zero. So that's 9k squared minus 8k is less than zero. Let's factorize it. B 
because we will need the critical values. Let's just turn that up. 9k in brackets. 9k minus 8. It's less than 0. So this will give us k equals 0 as one critical value. Over here, 9k um, minus 8 equals 0. 9k equals 8. k equals 8 over 9 as the other critical value. Let's sketch this quadratic. Oops, just with the y-axis, x-axis, sorry. So there's our quadratic critical values, um, 0 and 8 over 9. When is it less than 0 down here between these uh, values? So we can now go on to say that um, that will only be less than 0 when k is between 8 over 9 and 0, and when it's less than 8 over 9 and greater than 0. I should now be able to do exercise 7D on pages 149 to 150 of the textbook.